Hello, it's Paul with the Borderline Garage. Thanks for watching and uh, taking a check out of this video. Uh, just wanting to post up real quick, kind of make a little more of a raw video than I normally do. Not really much editing. Just going to throw this up because content's been hard with summertime. Here we are in full swing, running an off-road club, working full-time, in the garage full-time, part-time, uh, running Discover 4x4 Adventures. We are busy, busy especially in the summertime stuff just explodes we got toledo jeep fest coming up in just a couple weeks we're helping plan and get that together so uh so what's going on what i want to talk about today is use u joints u joints so axle shaft drive shaft u joints uh main topic greasable versus non-greasable i've heard a lot of opinions and i want to know your guys opinion so make sure you comment below Comment back on what I have to say here when I get this camera turned around talking about U-joints. I would love to know what you uh, think about this. Um, so today's projects, trans skid plate on this guy. Also did rear brakes and did a Yeti uh, Steer Smarts front track bar. Super heavy duty track bar. These things are massive. Now the TJ's pulled in and uh, this thing's got U-joints from 25 years ago probably. And they are rusty crusty and we're working on trying to get those out. So I'm going to get this camera turned around again and we will talk about U-joints. Well, here the TJ is up on the lift. I got it all pulled apart. Uh, wheel bearings out, brakes off, uh, drop, or axle shafts are out. And I already got the one all pulled apart. Another little side note, I always clean this area up nice and good for somebody. And I always anti-seize the crap out of it because those always come out real hard. And uh, we can help the next guy in getting this bearing out of there. Might as well, right? So let me take you over here to this axle shaft. This is the long side. I already got the short side all apart right there. So greasable versus not greasable. Getting to the point here. Look at this. So this is all wet because I've been soaking her down with the penetrant. But... Uh, you can see inside here is super dry. Well, that's supposed to be greasy, right? So I will say that nine out of 10 times I see U-joint failures because that's dried out and not greasy. So these guys had all kinds of movement when it was in this. You can see that bottom one moving. There's probably no needles left in there. So I was actually putting a clutch in this vehicle and happened to notice these a couple weeks ago. And so it came, came back to me to put those in. So, what do I like? What do you like? Um, let me know. I like the Dana Spicer U-joint. That's one of these guys right here. My thoughts on this is, um, I've used the uh, O'Reilly's, whatever brand, National, blah, blah, blah. Um, this right here is a Spicer. This is what comes in the Jeep. It's lasted 25 years, so this is what I'm gonna put back in there. Uh, Spicer has these little pieces here. Um, that's actually just little discs. Make sure you don't lose that. Um, so that rides on there. They are well greased. They have this red grease, which must be something special. I generally squirt a little bit of extra down in these caps when I put it together. Their bearings are a little bit nicer. Their dust caps are a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, they cost a little bit more. I think for this TJ, they were $35 a piece. Greasable versus not greasable. So I have this out to more so show you a greasable is going to have a zerk here for greasing and then it has a pass through going through here, here, and here which puts grease down in all these caps, right? I guess to me the question is what kind of off-roader are you? Are you someone who pedals down heavy through obstacles? Maybe you need that extra strength. Again, these have these pass-throughs, which takes away metal from this component, which makes it weaker. However, like I say, nine times out of ten, your average driver, I'm seeing the problem really is that it just gets dried out in those needle bearings. I've seen them actually dust, which this bottom one that's wiggling like that, that's probably all there was in there was dust. Um, so, if you're an average driver, maybe you don't even off-road your Jeep, your truck, your whatever it is you drive, your Toyota. Um, I definitely like the idea of greasable for that type of person. Again, if you need the strength, you know, maybe you need a Dana 60 anyway, but uh, the not greasable is probably the way to go for you. But uh, my opinion, I've come to like greasable more for your average everyday person. 
So again, give me a comment below. I would love to know uh, what your thoughts are, what your experiences are. I am the type of person that I love to know what experiences are. So we're going to make judgments on what's good and what's bad based off of what's actually happened. So share a story below. Would love to know what your thoughts are. And we'll see you guys out there on the trail. Joe Wade in the two-door. This obstacle is definitely not friendly to two doors. Yeah, wheelbase definitely helps because uh, the rock on the right here, that actually has about a four foot undercut. This is about two and a half feet here. Yeah, that's where he wants to be, over there towards the passenger side. There it is. Nice. Well done. There you go. Good job. I got a buddy that works for Cooper. Yeah. 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 